you know, about this whole thing about, I just want to get some clarification because I don't really fully 100% understand the whole issue about what you felt was the, my, your source, or you were refuting my source and somehow some this whole scientific error thing I found to be kind of confusing. So just wanted to get some clarification, but it looks like the, there's some comments were made that I was pretending to be ignorant so because this argument was so great or something like that uh would you like to retract that statement since i'm the one who organizes i'm the one who came after you to clarify yeah. the whole stuff yeah yeah we'll, we'll we'll um we'll obviously get to address that as well hi guys this is the first live podcast that i'm doing um yeah. so we i don't know if some of you would have watched um the original debate i had with nadir uh, I think it was a couple of months ago now, maybe a little bit more, um, where mm -hmm. we just discussed um, the embryology verse, um, which we kind of got locked into um, the nitty gritty, which I guess was the point of that, um, especially me as an ex-Muslim or a critic of Islam or a critic of Quran, mm -hmm. um, that there are some things that are not accurate or are not compatible with, um, with modern understanding of embryology. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, obviously, not held a different view. So we'll be discussing that uh, specific episode. I, I don't want to get locked into the same debate again because uh, we want to keep it an hour long and um, want to discuss quite a few other issues as well. Um, so I'll just address your question. So uh, being ignorant uh, of um, uh, of um, of, of the Quran or that specific verse you're talking about? What what yeah, were you exactly? I, mean, I watch your video and I guess comments were made that somehow comments were made like by me or by the commentators. I don't know. I don't know. I think we mentioned it in your last video that I was, uh, I'm pretending that I didn't understand yeah. the argument when really I did, just because it was so magnificent and I was just struck by it. I didn't have even a something like that. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. I I, I remember that. Feel that yeah. way? Yeah, 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 yeah. I do, I do, I, yeah, I, yeah. I do think that um, that you could, because I repeated myself multiple times yeah. that what you were saying was opposite to what was in the Quran, um, and uh, you, you first, you first did say, well, I don't understand what you're talking about, and even yeah, that video yeah. is a short clip of that. Whereas the video in the live stream we went on for, I think, 10 or 15 minutes where then you try to get Abdullah Samir involved in that as well. And oh, even man. you were claiming even he didn't understand it. So uh, as far as I was concerned, I, I could be, I, I was as clear as, as one could be, yet you didn't understand mm -hmm. it. But by the time you did understand, um, you, you changed the topic again. You said, well, show me a verse that says, uh, that, that says it, or oh, show me the, the, the scientific study that doesn't say it like that. So which, which I yeah. think probably obviously watched the video. So, so I did believe at that point, uh, again, like, I don't know what's in your heart. Um, it seemed to me that, that you were, um, when you were caught out of guard with a clear discrepancy Video. between the source that you quoted and the Quranic verse, you... I was backing up. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, so, so, yeah. Yeah, so, so, I, so I do feel that way. Uh, that's, again, uh, that's, that's my feeling yeah. at that point. Well, I, I got some bad news for you because I'm going to have to uh, basically pretend that I don't understand again. Because I don't understand it still. I know yeah. I said like in the debate, I thought at one point I understood what you're talking about. Yeah. But I, unfortunately, I still don't understand what you're talking about. So why don't you go ahead and um, explain to me what exactly is this whole issue about. And I'm going to pretend to be ignorant. Go ahead. Yeah, so the, the scientific source that I quoted to you, um, it, it is, which is quite clear in other instances as well. We've had textbook screenshots been sent to me as well. Um, mm -hmm. that, that, that confirmed the existing scientific position on that, that the bones and... Well, uh, take me from the beginning. Take me from the beginning. What I mean, from, to give me baby steps because... Yeah, so you, so you, you were yeah. saying that uh, first you get flesh and then bones. Uh, is that right? Right. Well, yeah. flesh and then, well, it's the, the Quran says, Mudga, and maybe, I, you know, I think I didn't explain it right in the debate. That might have thrown everybody off. I don't know. It starts with mudga, then it goes to bones, and then it goes to flesh. Yeah, but what is mudga? What, what is mudga? Mudga yeah. is a cloth. Yeah, so mudga, 
is basically something like a chewed like substance. I guess that's the way they define it. Chewed like piece of flesh. Yeah. Yeah, but but it's not. But that's not how it's defined in 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 any of the earlier um, uh, in any of the earlier tafsis. You're going to need to, I guess when it comes down to getting down to the nitty gritty of what Arabic words mean, then that's a debate you got to have with the experts on the yeah, Arabic yeah. language. No, no, do, you speak, no, no. do you speak I, Arabic? I am, I am simply going by what experts have to say on that. Now, the expert, okay. well, if, if we well, set the criteria, hang well, on. Well, what hang hang it, on, Nadia. Yeah. Let, let, let me make a point. So if we, if we, go, if we set the standards that the earlier tafsirs are the ones that we have to go by, then we have mm -hmm. to look into that. This leech-like substance, this chewed substance, is not mentioned anywhere in the in the classical. Okay. Language. So the, this is the okay. our position is that these are the modern interpretations, mm -hmm. or these are the modern inferences that that have been introduced by by, by Harun Yahya and, and 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 these modern apologists. I would correct you on that because where this information was coming from, it came. It, from the William Campbell debate with Dr. Zakir Naik. Yeah. This is back in 19, and over there, it was discussed over there, and William Campbell, uh, from my understanding, is very well versed on Arabic, and uh, it's been a long time since I watched the debate, yeah. but I think he also conferred that, yes, alaka means these things, but that's whether of alaka, the, the, the issue for, between you and me is where is a scientific error? That's what I don't get. But the, yeah, the, that is a scientific error because the Quranic verse. What, what's the verse number? So I mean, in the, uh, again, this is exactly what I didn't want to go into it. Uh, but now I, well, you, 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 you want to go into it. So so, so we well, have. To do, you, you don't need the verse number. Just type Quran, um, and then just type uh, lump, no, 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 bone. I, no, no, and I, I, flesh I, I, and the verse will come up. No, no, I, I want to read the exact. Um, uh, uh, I'm telling verse. you, Harris, how to find it. Uh, yeah, but I get wanna, the exact uh, verse by uh, typing that. No, but but I don't know which source it would lead me to. I, I, I want to go into. Um, uh, I, I want to go into the actual Quran.com. So l l let me find that uh, what the verse number was. Uh, yeah. So if you do what I tell you, just put that in Google. You'll get the verse. Just okay. type alaka, uh, just type just type leech clot stuff like that. The verses will come up. It Google is very well indexed, and you'll get it. Okay, Quran embryology verse. Okay, what's that verse number? Uh, where is it? So, uh, if I understand you correctly, Harris, you're saying that the alaka word having these out something which clings, uh, leech like, and well, leech like and cloud, these are all fabrications that were given to the word, right? Well, these, these are the modern interpretations, uh, interpretations that is being called that it's a leech-like substance or, um, or it's a chewed substance. Okay. The, 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 these are not, um, the, the, these, these terminologies cannot be found in any earlier um, uh, tafsirs or commentaries. So the Quran, the, the, uh, the verse is 2312. Okay. Um, Oh, and where, uh, what reference, what are you, what, what, what is your source of information for making such a claim? Well, first of all, Quran.com, the exact, um, the exact translations that we can see. And then, fair enough, You're going you, can say, you can say that we cannot work out exactly the context or there might be more to it that may not be 100% clear from, by, by just reading the verse. So we have to, so, so then I go into the tafsis. I have spent enough time of my life where I've looked into these modern interpretations. One um, Islamic website would say one thing, another one would say something else, and Zakir Naik would say something else. So I'm not interested in these modern okay. apologists. I'm interested in, so, in, in the classical tafsir. So, so here's the verse that says, that we made the sperm drop into a clinging clot, which is uh, alaka. We made the clot into a lump of flesh, and we made the lump bones. So it goes from lump to bones. I think you're... The study that you had quoted um, said bones to flesh. 
and that was the obvious contradiction basically okay so the, you're right so the quran says from bones to flesh the quran says lump and, to flesh and then it says oh yeah lump mudga well let's it says mudga then it says bones and then it says flesh and where is the error now yeah lump to I, I i really don't understand i mean how simple it can be it says we made the clot into a lump of flesh and we made from lump bones so from the from that lump of flesh we, we made bones and then we covered the bones with flesh so, so so this is like a circular process that's going on and the, the one they used the scientific study that you quoted again i'm yet to verify that it, it said bones with flesh and, and that's where you kept going around and around that look it says okay. bones with flesh As well said, let me ask you this question where is a scientific error in that verse well, be, because it says uh, bones and flesh. I mean, it shows a sequential um, the process, whereas the established scientific process it, is, um, position is that uh, the, 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 they are simultaneous, not sequential. Do you, what, what is simultaneous? I don't understand what you mean by simultaneous. So What's bones, simultaneous? So bones and flesh, they all are forming simultaneously. It's not a sequential process. So if we if we if we okay. look at the if we look at the sequence part at the start, the yeah, I mean you can clearly see that the Quran is trying to present you a sequential view, like it goes from sperm to a clinging clot, and then it goes to lump, and then bones, and then uh, flesh again, and then we made okay. another creation. Well, if so I may so interject, so you know actually when it talks about the bones is closed with flesh, the first problem here is. You know, when it talked about the bones being closed with flesh, it didn't what? say when the flesh was being created. No, the but, process of closing it. Yeah, what but, that means, I don't know. Yeah, but that, that, uh, but yeah. it doesn't. Uh, let me let me hold. Let me just, uh, Harris. Let me just finish my point here. When that flesh was created, or whether they're being uh, produced or created simultaneously. The Quran is silent on that. It doesn't say anything, yay or nay, on that. No, Wouldn't no, you agree? No, 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 no. I wouldn't because it, because it clearly does define it as a step by step process. It it does say lump to bones and then and then and then uh, bones to flesh. Um, it it does. So say the way when, you are reading it, you're saying it's created for uh, the way you are. Un you're saying first, I created. It says khalaka. You know, you know what khalaka means, right? You speak yeah. Urdu, right? Yeah. Makhluk, khalaka. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you Ali is in Urdu, so you can probably grasp it. So if you read it in the Arabic, like even for like me, I speak Urdu, just like you. You can see, oh hey, we created. Uh, I guess that's mudga, and then it says bones, but it didn't say, and we're creating flesh. The word. For creating the flesh is after the bones is not there. Well, he, as I you said, my, my, if you read it in Arabic, you'll see it. Well, I have read it. I mean, I'm 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 hovering my mouse over all these. Uh, you know what I think you're doing? I think you're interpreting it. You're 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 forcing it to read that bone that that we are that we are we created the flesh after the bones. You're forcing that interpretation on no, the no, text, no, but, but, but the but, text doesn't no, use the word. No, no, but if you don't. If you go back and listen to the original debate, that's what you were inferring at that point as well. You were if also. If I did that, I yeah. am so sorry if but, I did do that, no, and I don't no. remember, but yeah, I but apologize. No, 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 but but then you go again into this. So again, my point is, this is what my problem is: that when we show clear problems with even your understanding, let's just say at this point that it's not Quran that's wrong; that you interpreted it wrong back then. Mm -hmm. If if we go by this uh, explanation as well, then what's frustrating for people like me is the, that we've shown you that there is a problem, and yet you come back and you and and you either adopt a new reinterpretation, or you or, or you simply um, discard the previous one and sorry you reinterpret uh, the Quranic verse, and um, mm -hmm. and then you say well all, everything is hunky dory. Uh, it it so sounds like the circular position for you that you come back to the same point because you want to force the interpretation that you think is as compatible with science as possible and then go with the claim that this is some divine knowledge so that so, so that's my problem i mean yeah i i just want to finish yeah. this one this topic here now 
I welcome everyone who listens to this to go and it's a very long debate. Um, but uh, on my channel that I, I have put the, 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 the clips that where we got in, into the nitty gritty of this argument in my, uh, in, in one of the videos that you can find, find on my channel. And you can see that, that the, um, the, the position Nader had taken at that point was a little bit different from now. And he, you were definitely in favor of the sequential because you highlighted it multiple times. That, and then we covered the bones with flesh. Yeah. Aha. And then you quoted your scientific yeah. source with that. So, so you were quite... But, but Harris, that hold point. on a second. I, I think we got an agreement, a point of agreement. You see, if you look at that, I think where the confusion was, was you were reading the text that... Um, well, the, the, the text actually says bones is covered with flesh. As for when that flesh is, was created, was it created before the bone? Was it created after the bones were created? Was it created simultaneously? The Quran doesn't state anything. Yeah, but here's the problem. That. Here's the problem. The right? the, no, the honest interpretation. See, now I see that this position from you, which is totally new, it wasn't that before. The, mm -hmm. the, that it does. I mean, the position that you adopted. At that point, the show me the words that show me the scientific study that says nothing like this ever happens. I mean, I told you that things that don't happen are not. Okay, I'm gonna explain that. that. Let me explain that. Can I explain why I said that? Sure. And and I this is a big confusion which I think maybe a lot of people had. See, it's like if the if if a book says like space aliens run through your veins, and then I come and say. Show me a show me a scientific reference which says science that space aliens do not run through your veins. Yeah. Of course, you're not gonna find it. That's silly. You would exactly. agree with me, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but and but I totally yeah. sympathize for you on that. And yeah. let me explain my position. Just sure. hear me out. Sure. Okay. But when it comes to this, it doesn't apply. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because this argument first made its debut in 1996 or in the 90s when Zakir Naik and William Campbell discussed this. And you have to understand that uh, the people, the anti-Islamic groups out there, they have enormous funding. They're huge think tanks like Answering Islam, the Gatestone, the Gatestone Institute. You got people like John Bolton, the most powerful people some of the most powerful people in the country who are backing this type of anti-Islamic... Well, hold on a second. Hold on. I, no, no, Harris, but I, I really don't want to deviate from the topic. Cut me out. Come on. I really don't want to deviate from the topic. I mean, we, we, I, I don't care... I'm explaining my position. Okay, Harris, please don't interrupt me. Let me just explain, and then I, I've given you time to talk, and I will explain why. Uh, I've actually, so, uh, I actually haven't been talking as much as you have. I'm, I'm telling you, that, I'm giving you a little history of, this, of the argument of this, of this verse, okay? No, so, no, but no, but it's irrelevant because I have the Quran, I have the tafsis to look into. Harris, and I have you. you don't I, 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 yeah, but uh, sorry, I'm, I'm just making a point that I, I'm talking to you as a, as a person on good faith that whatever your understanding is, so I can understand that, and I hope you can understand. So whatever anti-Islamic movement has been going on has got nothing to do with this. Oh I'm my God, this. dude, you're not listening to me. If you don't want to listen to me, you don't want to talk to me. We don't have to talk. I'm explaining to you why I demand a scientific reference for what for this verse which you quoted, but you got to hear me out. Well, okay, so let me continue. Us, you were given, you were given so, then this, so then this kind of rat race began where they started approaching embryologists. They started approaching the scientific community to back their uh, arguments against Islam. So I think it was a very fair question. It's been almost 22 years now. You know, Muslims have brought their, you know, references from scientists, whether they're legitimate or not. At least they made a try. They got three embryologists to agree with what they said. My question is, with all that backing you guys had, how is it that it's 22 years later and not a single person from the scientific community has endorsed these arguments. No one. And I think that's no, no, a fair no, no. question to ask. Yeah it, is, yeah, it is a fair question, but you're not willing to accept. It's 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 a textbook level study that bones and um and, and flesh form simultaneously. Now you're saying, show me a no, word. Which, sorry. Hold on, no, no. You you were talking about two different things here. I'm asking you, uh, the reason why I demanded a scientific reference because of the 
I mean, in 22 years, with all the backing of John Bolton and all these people, you couldn't find any embryologist to agree with what you guys are saying, or at least look what at the embryonic what, verse what, what of the faith. Oh my God, the Quran is messed up. Not a, no, 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 How no. How is it you're coming in with nothing? Not a, no embryologist is going to come forward and say, well, Quran is wrong, or Bible is wrong, or Gita is wrong. They're just going to find out. They're going to publish their... Wrong. Yes. They do come out and say no, the Bible is wrong. No, 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 yeah, but, but it's probably easier to criticize. They talk Bible about the creation Bible. story in the Bible as being not completely is. inaccurate. Not if scientific study says the bones okay. and flesh form simultaneously, that's it. They're not going to give a commentary on that. that which right, we'll get to simultaneously stuff in just a second. We'll get to simultaneously stuff in just a second here, okay? But my point here is there's something wrong which you guys have to look at. You've got all this stuff about scientific errors in the Quran from astronomy to geology yeah. to... Uh, embryology. Yeah. How is it that you can't get academia to back you guys up? That's crazy. I mean, well, I don't know. And I think it's a good question. And no, and, no, I, no, and here's the thing: you guys don't have a good answer yeah, for having all this money and resources, uh, and you guys can't get anyone to back you guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I said, the, no one, no one is likely to say anything specifically about Quran. Okay. It's an established fact that the earth goes around the sun, not the other way around. So they're not going to talk about, they're not going to pinpoint the 11 verses where the Quran talks about um, a day and night in the context of the sun's orbit and the moon's orbit. So they're not going to give a commentary on that. So we know that already. They, so, they do. No, they won't. They won't. In fact, no. when I was, we, we talked about the Genesis story when I was taking Bible class. Yeah, 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 and the not, teacher said this stuff is all inaccurate. Yeah, but, but it's not politically correct to target a minority religion. Wow. So again, it's not my problem. Oh, that doesn't change the topic. <laughs> For 22 years, they've been politically correct. Oh. That's Okay, so I'm looking I at the... Yeah. I, have already, okay. I, have, I have already told you that the scientific established position is uh, someone actually sent me screenshots of the textbooks of, uh, uh, of, of UK medical school that actually said the same thing, that the bones and uh, flesh form simultaneously. Um, okay, well, now that's another problem. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. But the problem with that is, even when I read it, it didn't make any sense to me because it, it, it's full of jargons. We need popularizers to explain that to us, which is why I, I sent you the screenshot, the, the comment of, uh, of, a, um, of a professor of... Um, um, of You've of sent me something of a message board, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what? Well, what's wrong with that? He, I, I look at, yeah. I look at the, I, I look at the, I look at the credentials that the person is talking about. So if, if you are a PhD scientist or something, whether you say that to my face in person or you publish a book or whatever, I'm gonna hold that to value, to some value, unless you are, you are proven wrong. Um, but no one is proven here's wrong. Here's what I, here's what I think the problem is. Oh, you, you keep going back to these things are being formed simultaneously. I mentioned something about, well, no, I think it's a primordia, but then which are formed simultaneously. You don't. I also not mentioned you don't understand embryology. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't understand embryology. Wait, I don't talk. understand embryology. Uh, yeah, but, but, but we're just going into red hair. What, what I believe at this point, this is something beyond myself and beyond you to really talk about. I think the people who need to discuss this are the embryologists. And I also believe that embryologists were contacted. And I know, like, for example, the Think Tank Answering Islam and other groups like that, they've been approaching, um, uh, you know, doctors and people like that to back them. And what I believe is I think they see this as such a silly discussion. It they is. don't even want to touch it. Like yeah, it's a silly it, yeah, I'll tell you why. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll, they I'll tell think you why. trying to find a scientific error in this verse of the Quran no, is so silly. Not, the they don't want to mess with the Quran. That's no, what I believe. No, they're not. They're I they're think 22 years later, waiting for some scientist to one day look at this verse and find errors in it, I think is it's just never going to happen. The, after waiting for 22 it, years. It, it is such a stupid and silly position. It's, it's so silly for an embryologist to look at it. It shows step-by-step -step process. And why they don't get involved is because people like you will then say, well, it doesn't say that, the, that, that it's not a sequential, uh, it's, it's not a simultaneous process. So, so we know that how you actually twist and turn the meanings of your own words. Now, you were two months ago, you were adamant that, okay, bones and then flesh. 
And now yeah. you're saying, well, no, that- I do agree with that. No, I still accept that because remember the scientific reference which I provided you, which actually is in my argument. Zakir Naik mentioned the yeah, same thing Zakir in the debate. So I'm I mean, just Zakir Naik is not someone, backing off yeah, what he Zakir said. Zakir Naik is not someone who's respected by anyone. And I mean, the guy's. Okay. Now the guy you're insulting him. Okay, he's actually respected by some people. Yeah, well, well but I don't want to. I've seen the people okay. he gets respected by. Harris, they, they, Harris, they just let me. Okay. At anything that he says. Uh, the. I still hold firm to that position, but uh, I think, you know. Circular reasoning, Nadir, circular reasoning. You, whatever we show you, you just go around and come up with a new way and you say, well, okay, show me how it doesn't say that. I mean, it's not going to say something that it, it didn't even think about. Um, but anyway, I, I want to move away from this. I, I welcome everyone to, if you want to watch the full debate, you can watch the full debate on Abdullah Sami's channel. Or if you want to watch the certain clip that we are stuck here on again, then you can go to my channel and then you can see the difference um, in, in, in Nadia's position. Uh, at that point, he said, show Hi, me. Harris? Yeah, hello. Yeah. Okay. Harris, you there? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, I want to move hello? away from this. I want to move away from this. I, I think Nadia can't hear me now. Can oh, yeah. Me, uh, I, can yeah, hear, I'm sorry. yeah. I can hear you now. You just, yeah, something happened. I think you, 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 yeah. you uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, so, you know, I I want to I want to move I, away from this yeah. now because I think I think our positions have been made clear. Um, I'm, we're, we're just gonna have to leave it at that because. Um, okay. I, I, I would I would. Can, can I ask you a question, Harris? Yeah. Okay. So like, well, by the way, I just wanted to say whatever I presented from Living Strong or whatever in the debate, I still hold that position. But I was just trying to understand where you're coming from. But I think a comment was made is. When trying to find scientific errors in the Quran, aren't there? Couldn't you have chosen a better example? Because this one no, was like. I've, no, I've got twelve yeah. of them. What's that? We've got, we, we, we've got plenty of them. I've, I've written a book on the subject, and then I've got a, the biggest chapter is scientific errors in the Quran. Uh, the, okay. So, so the, the, there are quite a few of them, uh, but again, this is what 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 frustrates me to so much. That no matter what evidence or counter arguments you presented, you always come up with red hearings. And now, for example, you say, I, I, I don't even understand your position anymore because there's there's so many flip floppy positions in there uh, that I, I, I've, I've actually lost track of that. And again, like if I start, if, if I read you verse by verse, 11 verses that, sh that talk about mm -hmm. um, uh, day and night. In, in the context of sun and moon orbit. I mean, what the hell is that? that? Then you would say, well, it doesn't specifically say that the sun is orbiting around the earth. Then that, that's the count, best argument that you're gonna give us. But we know that if that was the common view at that point, it was supposed to be understood that this is how things work. I mean, day and night are caused by sun's orbit. Sun rises in the east, sets in the west. And that's why Quran, the, the Quran is talking about uh, day and night, and the orbit of the sun. The orbit of sun has nothing to do with, with day and night. Why there are 11 verses that talk about that? Um, but I already know your position on that. Now you're gonna say that, well, it doesn't specifically say that. Well, go ahead. I mean, if you, you, well, wanna, you wanna go not, with that, you can go with that. Let, <laughs> let's not open up that can of worms, okay? Well, but, definitely the can of worm with you. I mean, <laughs> it, okay. it, it, it just goes into other red hearings. And, and the, which is why I didn't wanna go again into debates and debates. Um, we, we've yeah. spoken about it um, now. But Harris, you would agree with me. You know, see, I think what you're saying, going back to what we're saying, um, you see bones and flesh, or what did you say, bones and muscles in specific? You said bones and muscles I was form simultaneously. I, I was being charitable to you that yeah, I, I was including even muscles and tissue in the category of flesh. Um, uh, and skin and nerves and all of that, right? Yeah, everything. You, you can, even if you throw everything in it at the same time, it still would not fit in with the, with the modern understanding. Could you accept your mistake here? One mistake you did, no matter what you believe, whether you got to come with some kind of authoritative reference where you could post and say, here you go, Again, based you on this. You just can't come in there, okay, here. Uh, bones and flesh form simultaneously. No, I don't know that. Can you please show it to me? I did you got to come with some kind of I reference. Did show you. I did show you. Nadia. You showed and me a message board. Yeah, it's a scientist. If, if there was okay. a message board from Stephen Hawking, would you have just discarded it? Oh well, it's just, it's just no, a message. you can't bring message board, dude. No, no message board. You can't no, bring them. The, the opinions, well, I hold, okay. 
I hold the opinion of a scientist above uh, the the opinion of someone like Zach and I, for instance. No opinions of scientists count. No, don't bring any opinions of scientists. Don't no, bring any message boards. This no, is no. all. Uh, I'll send you the screenshot of a... Um, no, a, a, we don't actually, want it. Well, we, hang on This is what you're not I'll, understanding. Hang on a sec. Hang on it's a sec. not acceptable to bring a message will, board. It's not you, acceptable to bring you, an opinion of some scientist. I will send you... It's not an opinion. It's an established fact. I, I'll send you the... I'll okay, send you a screenshot. Okay. I'll, send you, I'll, send you, I'll send you a screenshot. Ah, of the so there you go. We I'll are agreeing now. You no, no, we are agreeing. Herod. No, no, no. I'm How to establish a fact. I am sick this and tired. is where we need to talk about. I am sick and tired of this game with you guys. That whatever evidence that is given to you, you just you just throw We're it away. Sick and tired you of your game, it. dude. You're you're not being any more uh, logical than I am here. Okay, you're getting frustrated. No, I'm, so I'm, I'm, but I'm pretty cordial to you. I will always have a little edge on you in in that regard. But um, uh, the, I, I posted a screenshot of a, of a textbook of a, of, a, of a medical school. Hey, Nada, hear me out. I, w I would. Uh, I'll send you the textbook. Okay, that's good. Medical school, good. You I love gonna, that. But, but you, you didn't do that. that. No, 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 no. I did that. I no, no, not in that debate. But I did it the next day. I saw oh, someone, okay. Someone sent, me, someone sent me on my page, and I and, and I posted it. And I'll, Thank I'll you. The the girl. You and I, I are saying the girl. I do I now. No, no, no. no, no. But hang on. Here's here's the point. Yeah. Even I didn't understand that, it, it, and she was a doctor, so she actually told me that this is exactly what means. This means that bones and flesh are sequential, uh, are, are, are simultaneous. So even I didn't yeah. understand that, and I was like, okay, well, this okay. is why we need popularizers with, with, with the people like the Dr. Alistair that I actually quoted, because we don't understand the actual medical. No, jargon. you don't want any quotes from no doctors, dude. That's how you sell. That's I mean, do you not watch those commercials of yeah. these yeah. enhancement yeah. pills? All doctors say, oh, yeah, I'm this is a scam. You got to understand how to establish a fact. Bring a medical textbook uh, like you just said. Yeah, That's yeah, okay. how you do it. Yeah, I okay. could look at okay. that. I could say, okay. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, okay. I had a discussion with Mr. X, Y, and Z, and he told me this. I don't know, I don't know if oh, someone That's has. what you said in the debate. <laughs> I don't know if anyone who's, who's watching this is, um, is aware of that girl's name who actually sent us that uh, screenshot of the textbook. Uh, if mm -hmm. you're listening to it, it's somewhere along my hidden in my page. I can't find it. Okay. Um, but if I do, if someone does find it, please send it to me while Nada is on the line. So I want to move away from that subject now. Um, the, the Quranic verse you do accept. It doesn't. The flesh which comes after the bones. It doesn't talk about when they're forming or what are they forming simultaneously. What are you talking about? It, it what doesn't say any of that. Oh Jesus! What are you talking about? If you say it's forming after it, then it means it comes after it. It's not simultaneous. It doesn't. It, it obviously just means it's not it with French. Okay. It, 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 okay. Well, that is so frustrating. I, I, I really cannot okay. understand this word game that you play. You, you just said that if Quran says after, yeah, then it gotta... doesn't mean then it doesn't contradict the fact that it's it's uh, it's uh, simultaneous. Of okay. course, it means it's not simultaneous if it comes out one or the other. Let me explain the. Okay, I tell you, what, let's not talk over each other. I'm gonna explain the word game I'm playing. Okay. So the text of the Quran simply made a statement. We closed the bone with flesh so the word for the word creating forming all this stuff is what you are reading into the text which is not there in the text no, no, it, so it, 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 it is directly in the text it says we made the clot into a lamp no 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 speak in arabic. arabic actually no, that's no, all no, Urdu no, right there no 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 i'm gonna speak in english so everyone can understand it we no, made no, no, the dude, clot listen, into listen. Again, there you go. You oh, know what, Nadir? If you're gonna if you're gonna okay. play this game like this, I'm not I'm not interested in this. You know, this is extremely okay. frustrating. So if you want to move okay. on to a um, we can go on. Um, well, and, the word creating was only used, I think, in the very beginning about mudga, oh. and then there's no the word was never used. Okay. So all the forming and creating stuff so everyone is, is what you are interpreting into it. So, so so we're reading we are reading the wrong translation in Quran.com, right? So let let me well, hear. Well, there you, you go. Talk. Okay, let me, let me explain your big blunder here. You're reading an English translation. Yeah. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be yeah, going right. to the looking at the right. Arabic text. Why do, so intend, okay, so let's 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 get on with it. Okay. Maybe we are interpreting in Quran because uh, Arabic just cannot be translated into English. Now my now no, I want to get into this conversation. Easy. No, no, now now I want to get into the other conversation. So I'm gonna ask you okay. why did your God create a language that cannot even be fucking translated into any other language? Uh, you know. 
Please don't use those type of words. Come on, no, no. dude. I'm, I'm, I'm referring that to the, I'm, I'm using the word towards the translation. I'm not, I'm not saying that towards your God or anything. I'm, I'm asking you, why could he not create a language that could be translated into any other language? You know, to understand Newton, Newton wrote uh, Principia in Latin. And we have no problem in, with anyone saying that, okay, well, you don't understand the context, you don't understand the language. No one is saying that we understand it. We, we, we translate that into English and everyone understands it. Why could your God not write a language that could be understood and translated? Okay, so I will try to explain it for you. I think what God gave us in the Arabic language, I think was very descriptive. It really, you really get a very, very good understanding. I mean, like I, like I'm like you. You know, I speak Urdu. I'm originally from Pakistan, but I was able to learn a lot of the Arabic and understand a lot of the Quran. So I actually don't walk away with this terrible confusion. You know, um, well, you do. So I don't think there is a problem. Now, well, there, of course, there are verses which, you know, are could be vague and ambiguous. There's some verses which can be mean a couple of different things which are open to interpretation but that's but, any scripture yeah no no okay. any oh, book okay. well first of all let me tell you me being a native Urdu speaker i cannot make a sense out of quranic uh, out of the quranic verses you know the uh, the arabic is so much different uh, you, you know the arabic is so much different from the urdu you, can you speak arabic um no i can't I, ca I can't speak arabic um did you even try to at least yeah, pick yeah. up a book and learn uh, no, I didn't. I, 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 okay, I, well, you I can do it. Once you do it, you'll see that it's actually really good. Okay, you'll really get a really good understanding. Right, right. Uh, so, but, okay. So, if 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 it would be easier for me as an Urdu speaker, because it's derived from, um, if it's derived from uh, Arabic. Uh, then fair enough. But what about the English speakers, the French speakers, the German speakers? Your whole Dawa movement relies on the fact that, okay, well, we are sending the true picture of, of Islam, which comes from the Quran. If, so, so these people, are, you're basically you're saying, have no hope in hell to understanding Quran because they, if they don't understand Arabic, that's it. And I can guarantee you all these white converts don't understand or speak Arabic. So what is... We are, we're there, okay, let me just explain from, you know, I was debating the Quranic and science before I even understood the Arabic. So I think you're creating a false dilemma here. The people who are converting to Islam, and I'm actually involved in Dawah, I have not had an occasion where everyone is just throwing their hands up in confusion. Oh my God, this is all confusing. What do the text actually yeah, say? This is a false dilemma you are creating. No, because, but because, I'm enjoying it. Keep going, no, because, keep going. No, 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 because, yeah, because it's an ignorance. Like, I mean, uh, there's so many people who are not told about all these controversial verses and they have no idea about it. What, what controversial they, verse are you talking well, about? You, let, let's just stick to the embryology verse, right? You're saying that it doesn't, it, you're saying that it doesn't talk about um, Forget about that. Dude. It, I'm done talking about embryology. Yeah. I, I'm really okay. burned out on that. You ask, you ask Let's move on. on. Okay, I, I can pick. Let's talk other. about apostasy. I can. No, you I, know I, you. I can. I can. I can pick eleven other verses. I'm specifically talking about about the problems okay. in the Quran, and and you're saying well, if these right. people don't understand the Quran uh, because they don't understand the language. My argument is that no, I didn't say that. So okay, can I ex explain my position here? Go, go ahead. Okay, Try again. here. Okay, here's what I'm trying to explain to you, going back to the verse. Even if you don't speak Arabic, you can still get a really good understanding of what those Arabic word means because we got so many cool tools on the Internet. Like, for example, when I debate the Bible, I can go to crosswalk.com and I can go to the lexicon and look at the meaning of Greek words, see how they're being used in what place and where. All these tools are available. And I think, a, you know, a criticism which I kind of have about you here is you don't even make use of these tools. You don't even bother to look at, okay, is creating use being used here versus clothing? And what's the difference between these words? Okay, the word clothed is used here. Ah, but it's used four places else in the Quran. And let's see what it means over there. I mean, none of this research was even done by you. And you're just going off saying, oh, forming here, forming here, because you're reading an English translation. I don't do that with a Bible, so and you shouldn't do that with a Quran. What what clothing word are you talking about? I mean, I, I I any sane person would know that if you talk about clothing, something doesn't necessarily mean a piece of fabric. It could be taken as covering as well. You're, so you're just dude, that's an English me. word. You're, you're, oh my you're, God! Forget about English. You're, you're, you're just, just so bad. You don't. 
<laughs> Stop Good. talking. You got to look at the Arabic word. You got to look at the Greek word if you're talking about the Bible and start so, addressing that so, word. So these, translators, so these translators of the Arabic, they, they don't know this? Well, if you look at the translations... They all, I mean, if you look at an English translation, they're all using a variety of different words. And some of it is right, some of it is wrong. Some of it is their own interpretation. Well, most, most so, yeah, you can never rely on an English translation. Well, well I, I've, uh, look, I've, I've looked at three well, different... Let me give you some examples. Um, Why don't you go and look at some of the lexicons, which are free? I mean, you can click on these words, and it will show you the meaning and the usages all throughout the Quran. And I think even, no, yeah, just in the Quran... And then you can get a pretty good feeling for what these words mean and how they're used. You should do that kind of research. I, th I, think, I, I think I do understand that. This is just you making claims after claims. Don't claim. say the word clothing and the clothing means it. That's an English word. Okay. Um, yeah, no, no, no. But if, the, if that word is being used in the context of the actual Arabic, right. I, I have no problem with that. Um, but anyway, so you, 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 you said something about apostasy. What, 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 what was the question that you wanted to yeah, ask? Talk, yeah, I'm done with... Uh, this whole science of the Quran. <laughs> I think you should thing. drop the idea. I think you should drop the idea. A lot of people have dropped. I think it. you should drop the idea of trying to find a scientific error, but yeah. that's okay. We're done with that topic. The, the uh, but anyway, so what was? I'm curious. What happened with that whole Hizbut Tahrir thing? Yeah. Like that one guy. I was just reading an article about. It. I didn't read the whole thing. And then you asked him about apostasy. What happened there? So Uthman Badr, uh, he's a spokesperson for Hizbut Tahrir here in Australia. So. Um, he, he was first how it started. He, he was recorded um, saying it, it was actually in the constitution of his Tahrir that um, the Islamic position is that apostates should be killed and we stand by that. So it, it got picked up by, by his uh, local media and they questioned him on that and then he had to reaffirm. But they changed the constitution um, and it's no longer can be found in that, but the original screenshots are there uh, for anyone to see. So uh, so I knew I, I knew that was um, a topic that uh, he has gotten in trouble with before, but also he hasn't actually uh, gone against it, probably out of fear of embarrassment of um, uh, that that he's changed his position, etc. Because a lot of people don't want to change the position or something. Um, even though I'm sympathetic towards the idea of some other interpreters that apostasy, the death for apostasy is not written anywhere in the Quran. Fair enough, that's fine with me. Um, but 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 people like his Tahrir or some other Salafis who who focus on every Sahih Hadith or what they have classified as Sahih, um, mm -hmm. they they go by that and um, and and anyway. So he so he knew he he had been in trouble for that. That's why he didn't want to answer the question. I kept trying again. I mean, this is what the source of frustration for me. I only got five minutes to have a cross conversation with him. Every point I made in the debate, he did not discuss that. He just had his own narrative that he just kept going on and on. Um, but he did not address a single point that I attacked Islam on, or any any sane Muslim would want to defend those points. That if I'm so, so he's as Quran, bad as me, or um, worse. Uh, on, on that topic, he was worse than you because <laughs> um, he he had he had a position. You you. you I don't know. I actually haven't analyzed um, his view on some other things, um, and um, we, we didn't even touch the, uh, the 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 Quran, the science, and the Quran part. But I've noticed that most philosophical these Muslim apologists who are who have who are doing some sort of a degree in philosophy or PhD in philosophy, they actually don't get into this science and the Quran debate. They, they, they take it to a different philosophical turn. That the Quran is a book of science, it's not a book of science. It, it's it didn't. May, it didn't mean to convey a scientific message. It just meant to um, convey a message in in light that the local people could understand. So, for example, like if, if Quran has started talking about quantum physics, then no one would have understood. Yeah, fine, okay. Um, so, so that's the position they take. But you are, are falling a little bit behind in time, where you are actually persisting with the idea that that there is science in the Quran, or there is nothing that um, is. No, I disagree. I think it's mainstream. Majority of the Muslims uh, believe that there is something miraculous about the Quran, and I'm re I'm ready to debate that, um, and I'm ready to discuss that with um, any worthy uh, opponent on that to show that the Quran is a miracle. In fact, I'm involved in Dawah here, and 
I always use Quran and science, and, and so does everybody around me. So that's wrong. Just because one or two people might have had a negative opinion, that doesn't speak for all of us. I think probably majority of Muslims are going to ex accept what I say about it. it is miraculous. And there are many verses in the Quran with science. Not only that, but prophecies being fulfilled. Um, majority, even non-Muslims agree on that part. So there is something miraculous about yeah. the Quran. Yeah, maybe some superstitious people from other faiths might think that um, the prophecies... That's well. where we got to get debates going on. And yeah. I haven't had one yet, but I'm putting it together. Yeah. We're going to get some people and we're going to have them look at these verses. And as you've yeah, seen, scientists have already agreed with us. Whether that's, no. That doesn't prove it, but at least what I'm showing you is there are some other people who are sharing the same opinion as we are but yeah no they're not the, the, uh, the people again like i mean if you go to keith moore and these kind of people come on they they never publicly came out after those statements and defended those positions so but anyway look i i, I again i don't want to open the can of worms again yeah, yeah we're, um, we're done with it. yeah so we're done with that one so the um well i think we've we've got a few minutes left so any people right. have any questions here and please be respectful um i i do think that um that Nadir is honestly wrong about things in his mind. He thinks he's correct, but um, but but he's not being deceptive here. Maybe sometimes we get defensive, and uh, maybe I'm guilty of that too. Um, but the but, but I think he genuinely believes in what he believes, and and I think this is what I hope that you understand about the ex-Muslims as well. That whatever reservations they have against the Quran or the Hadith or the, the Seerah of Muhammad, they have the same. We, we have genuine concerns, or you, you could argue that our, our understanding is um, is obviously fallible, but um, or, or could be wrong. But that doesn't mean that we are actually genuinely, purposefully being deceitful. Um, and and I, and I hope. Hey, you Harris, anyway. If I may say something, you know, uh, ex-Muslims have done a lot of good for Islam. You know, yeah. Muhammad Ali Jinnah, you know, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, he was an apostate. Well, he wasn't an apostate. He wasn't a confirmed apostate. I mean, I, I have a view that he probably was an atheist, but uh, but, but he wasn't. Well, that's what people say. He was an apostate from Islam. He left Islam. And he was a founder of Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, And again, like, I mean, I, 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 this is what I argue with, uh, with a lot of Indians, uh, my Indian followers, that um, the... the their bone of contention is that, well, if Pakistan formed on the basis of religion and if religion dies out, then technically Pakistan's foundation is gone and they, they should become a part of India. Or they, they don't explicitly say that, but, but, but they at least try to demean the existence of Pakistan. And I said, well, that, that's true that Muhammad Ali Jinnah at that time thought that Muslims were being persecuted and they were not being treated equally or they would not be treated equally under, uh, mm -hmm. under United India with the claim that could that might have seemed correct at the time of Jinnah, but obviously now we can see that, that different nationalities can coexist or different fates can coexist, especially if they go towards more um, uh, secularistic or more tolerant um, frame of mind. Uh, but that doesn't mean that, you know, you can't do good for Muslims. I mean, I, 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 I often give that or think about this analogy that I'm not an Aboriginal Australian, but um, in Australia, we have a history of mistreating Aboriginals, and the rights have been—I uh, mean, the, 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 have been violated as equal citizens. But now, I think the, the Anglo-Saxon government is actually bending over backwards towards um, uh, Aboriginals and trying to normalise them and trying to bring them to equal standing. Uh, but if I stood up and I fought for fought for the rights of Aboriginals, that doesn't make me an Aboriginal. Um, uh, that's just me standing up for human human rights and human values. And I think that's what Jinnah did. I mean, Jinnah taught. That, that, that Muslims would not get equal opportunity, and that's why he did what he did, and it's commendable, whether he, regardless of whether he was an atheist in private or not. Well, well, you know, I'll, uh, he's not the only ex-Muslim. A lot of ex-Muslims um, have become like involved inside civil rights and fought for Muslim rights, uh, like MPAC, a Muslim Political Action Committee in America. A lot of those yeah. people could technically be termed as defined as ex-Muslims. Right, right. Because you know, well, they, 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 the good they, thing about ex-Muslims, they're a great bridge to get over to the other side. Like, for example, if I were to say something, the the, the evangelicals and zealots, they're not going to listen to me for merely being a Muslim. They're going to say, "Oh, you're doing taqiyya, you're 
part of this conspiracy. Mm -hmm. But if an ex-Muslim can come and say some of the same things which I'm saying, they're going to listen to him. So in that sense, they've done a lot of good work for the advancement of Muslim rights in the West. Right. And, and, and look again, which is why we say that uh, the people like Uthman Badr are not going to help that cause. We, most ex-Muslims have majority Muslim families. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's bizarre that a lot of people, outsiders would listen to people like me, but our family members wouldn't listen to us because it, 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 for whatever reason, I mean, religion is so strongly ingrained in a human psyche that it's very difficult to leave it regardless of seeing problems in that or not. Um, but this, this, no, this normalizing dissent, would you agree that in, that in any society, whether it's a Muslim country or not, whether in your family or not, uh, even if you are in a, living in a secular country or a Western country, if a, if a child comes out and says, well, I no longer believe in, in Islam, they have a perfect right to live on their normal life and they should not be isolated. They shouldn't be kicked out. I don't know if you have any kids or not, but, but let me ask you, like, sure. if, you, if, you, if you found out that you're one of your daughter or your son comes to you and says, well, dad, I'm sorry. I think this all looks like hogwash to me. So I'm, I don't believe in any of that, but I, but I love you as my father and I want to maintain a good, healthy relationship. What would your re reaction be? Would you, would you actually start disowning them as your, as your children? Well, my reaction will probably be the same as uh, most, let's say your reaction. If your son or daughter said, I want to be a Muslim, um, of course, I'm not going to like it, but you know, we love our, I love majority of Muslims. We love our children as much as you. And we got to understand in the Muslim community, 20% right around there of Muslims are actually apostates who have walked away from the religion. So this is not something unusual. Uh, in my case, my kids go to an Islamic school over here, but yeah, when they get up, when they grow up, they're going to, they're going to be exposed to the sex, drugs, and rock and roll lifestyle culture. And they're going to have to make a choice. You're going to want to follow the Islamic life or this uh, Western life, or maybe they might even blend the two. So I think I would agree with you. Violence, coercion, that was done by everybody. Okay. Not just Muslims. Muslims do not have this, uh, how shall I say, sole thing about killing apostates and stuff like that. Everybody did it, even till today. People are killing apostates in India, in China, and uh, Russia, actually in Russia, to leave the Russian Orthodox Church, you will be persecuted for that and try to join like an American evangelical branch. Uh, Vladimir Putin has made laws against that. So that was done in the past by everybody, not just Muslims, but Let's just leave it in the past and let's begin a new future of tolerance. That's what I believe. And that is backed by the Quran. Yeah, well, see, see this is the problem. Like, I mean, I, I actually have a lot of sympathy for hardliners and fundamentalists um, because they are trying to adopt the most honest interpretation of Islam. Now, what it, what, what, so if you say, well, okay, we can still be, uh, we can still maintain a relationship with our children, sure, sure. Uh, even if they become apostates or something. What do you have to say about the Quranic verse that says, don't take your father or brother as friend if, uh, if they uh, become unbelievers? I've never seen such a verse. Really? You'll have to show it to me. Yep. Oh, my. Dear. You might be dreaming that up. I might be dreaming that up? Yeah. You might be oh. inventing that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, jeez. Uh, even if you're, even we as Muslims, and you know this, when in fact this is like textbook dawa. If your parents are not Muslim, but the kids are Muslim, you still must respect and love them. Absolutely. If my daughter decided to become an atheist to, uh, uh, tomorrow, well, she's seven, but I'm saying even when she grows up or something like that, I'm gonna love her just as much as before. Now, am I might. Cut her out of will, but <laughs> I'll steal as much as I would any other of my kids. Yeah. So there is nothing in the Quran which contradicts that. Okay. Well, the, the Quran is silent on that. Then, no, I mean you can't. Uh, you know, like, look, I mean, I'm interested to see how you, you, how you twist and turn it to sure. your to your worldview. Yeah. Oh, you have believed. Do not take your fathers or your brothers as allies if they have preferred disbelief over belief. And whoever does so among you, then it is those who are wrongdoers. Quran 9.23. As allies. Well, what? that's so open for interpretation. You said yes, friends. Or 
So How allies, you allies can be friends. A allies can be friends. I mean, okay, he, that's your own interpretation. Okay. Okay. That's I get it. Own, I, I, I get it. Is, yeah. I, I get it. So, so, so you could even say, okay, well, allies. Well, could, here, let me give you a better verse. Uh, chapter number sixty, verse five. Over, over there, uh, it says, "Pray that you never become." A fitna to the disbelievers. Fitna, as you know, any kind of source unrest. of discomfort unrest. or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, 60 verse 5. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it means unrest. Yeah. So so that is again, it is. If well, you, if you I, don't, say, I, I have my phone. Hold on, Harris. I have my phone here so I can actually read any verses. Could you read that verse for us just so that. What, um, the, the, the one that yeah. you quoted? The one that yeah, you 65. Quoted? Okay. Because I can't do it. Uh, I'm holding a phone here. Sure. Our Lord make us not objects of torment for the disbelievers and forgive us our lord indeed it, yes indeed it is you who is exalted in might the wise mm -hmm. so so see, let me give you my understanding of the verse ne the word there is fitna and you speak urdu you know what fitna is yeah any sort of discomfort any kind of problem we it, this is a prayer that we should never become a source of problems for the disbelievers and that knocks out like 50% of all of this anti-Islamic propaganda, which they say I, against. Yeah, okay. Well, no, that's fine. It, 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 it is a good verse. I can, I can say that. Okay, well, you, can, okay. you can use this verse to, to, sp to spread a peaceful message. But then there's another yes, verse. Yes, you do. Yeah, the, the verse that I quoted. This is why people like us, the critics of Islam. Well, can you quote no, it again hang on, for hang me? Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. Let me. Let me finish my point. So, and, and I'll read that for sure. you. But the problem here that we see as a critics of Islam is that this shows the human element in that. The, the, the verse says one thing in one instance because there's a context behind that. So I, 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 I'm actually not aware of the context. So maybe, is that a Meccan verse or a Medinian verse? Um, uh, it makes no difference. Well, no, we still have to follow all the Quran. That's a big hoodwinkle, Meccan and Medina. Medina. No, no, you got to follow all of it. No, no, no. But we need to understand the context that under what circumstances the verse came in this is the argument that you give about all the violent verses that we when we quote the violent verses you say well it was only for that time because prophet was no about i don't say that okay the okay. quranic okay. verses the quran is a book of peace and that's why people should believe it because so, it so, condemned but yeah it's, it's a book of peace is a book which um so which kilo, the violent so, part, yeah go okay. ahead go, go ahead yeah, so the kill the disbelievers one. What would you say about that one? Because if we just read that, we don't understand. We don't read the context. We don't try to read the commentary on that. We actually don't know. We can take it as a general statement: kill all the disbelievers. What would you do in that case? Would you say, well, no, it was only for that point? It, it no, that no, 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 no. What no, would you say? First of all, let me let me help you out. Uh, read chapter nine, verse five. That's the kill the disbelievers verse. Okay, Go ahead. Which, can you read that? Which one? Nine, five. Surah 9.5. Okay. Let's read that one. Surah 9.5, yeah. And when the, say oh, yeah. when the sacred month, months have passed, then kill the polytheists wherever you find them and capture them and besiege them and sit and wait for them at every place of ambush. But if they should repent, establish prayer and give zakah, let them go their way. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. Yeah, so, so, so yeah, so you, you would... Uh, you can't get out of that by just simply reading this this text. You have to explain the context, and then that can is I, the I best detail that Muslim apologists use. Yeah, go. Can I, can I explain it now? So the violent passages, like Surah nine five. Yeah. Let me explain it to you. These are the. I'm not going to tell you. Oh no, this was just for that time. What I will tell you. These are the best verses of the Quran because it wow. is further proof that the Quran is the word of God and the book of peace because read the verse right before it. It says in Surah 9 verse 4, except those people whom you have made a treaty with and whom yeah, actually, I'm, I'm, please read the verse because I, I don't have it in front of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, yeah I'm, I'm aware of that. It, it is no, no, just read 9-4 for me. Accepted are those with whom you made a treaty among the polytheists, and then they have not deficient toward you in anything or supported anyone against you. So complete for uh -huh. them a treaty until their term has ended. Indeed, Allah has the right. Yeah, so it, it, it is whoa, in the context whoa, of whoa, whoa, as well. Whoa. You forgot the most important part. It says, and God loves those righteous non-believers. So yeah, the yeah. Quran said God loves the non-believers, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but. <laughs> See, but but again, you need. So, what treaty is he talking about? Can you tell me? Okay, 
So um, I think this is again this is talking about the Treaty of Hudaybiyah if I'm if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 that's correct. Uh, uh, but, but can I say one thing about the verse? So look what we see here. Before the Quran asks you to kill, it first clears out the innocent people, yeah. the people right, who right, have right. not done anything wrong to you. Now that you've right. read that and it said for those righteous people, God yeah. loves you. So, so, so the that's what the Quran says. So, so here's the problem. I, I'm not going to go into the context either because it's going to favor me, but then you're going to say, well, well you, that wasn't even your position. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I love talking about the sword versus the Quran. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, best yeah. part of the Quran. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's the best part of the Quran. So if if you break That's a treaty, you, you you go and kill them. I mean, there's no there's no effort can be made to renegotiate. You can restart something, and then you can oh, sure, maybe sure. forgive them. Well, so, so that's none of that can happen. That's no, 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 not no. what the text no, says. No, no, um, no. It's giving we, you an option. It's giving you an option that okay, well, then you can okay. kill all the polytheists or whatever, wherever you find. No, them no, no, no. Okay, I will answer that. Okay, so does this mean that you can just now uh, kill all the polytheists? Do they get a second chance for breaking a peace treaty uh, or something like that? Of course, we no, read, read 9 verse 4, now read 9 6. 9 6, it, it says right. over there, if any of the disbelievers seek your protection, what does he do? Kill them? No, it says grant them protection and escort them to a place where they can be safe. It says, escort them to a place where they can be safe. Here you go. You can renegotiate whatever peace treaty you want. Because the thing about the Quran, which I really love about the sword verses, is that it excludes any kind of killing of innocent people. And it only specifically says only those people who are violent and who are fighting you are the only people you are to fight. Okay. Um Okay, well, I got your point on that. Um, now we've got questions coming in as well, so let's have a look at this verse. I mean, I, I'm actually cu curious to see your your all your points on these ones. Um, so this guy wants to ask about chapter three, verse 20, 22. It says, "There are the ones whose deeds have become worthless in this world and the hereafter, and for them there will be no helpers." Uh, I mean, it, it's again a vague conversation, which it, which is so easy for me, uh, if I was to become a Muslim apologist, to reinterpret it in any way, which way I want. So, uh, so let, let me understand your position a little bit better. Do you do you follow hadith as well? And if you do, are they, I'm, I'm assuming you're a Sunni. So, so do you follow all the Sahih hadith, or you actually try to work out whether whether it doesn't make sense with your modern interpretation or understanding, or you, or you, or you just believe in it. Hello, can you hear me? Nadir, I think we may have lost Nadir. Hello, Nadir. Okay, well, while he's gone, I think hopefully he should come back soon. Um. Hello, Nadir. Uh, can anyone hear me? Can Can you please tell me? If you can hear me. Okay, we definitely can't hear him. Um. Okay, I uh, I don't know what else we can do now while Nada is gone. Maybe. Uh, oh hi, I'm sorry hi. about that. I sorry about that. Okay, you know that's okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is why we say the Quran is the book of peace. The sword verses are only for violent, aggressive people, and it clearly 
clears out the innocent civilians. That's just one passage. There's many more like this, which tells you, do yeah. not kill innocent civilians. Yeah, okay. We, okay, we, we can definitely talk about them in detail. At this point, I just really want to take your perspective on a lot of things. So to, I, I don't know if you understood my question or heard my question before. I wanted to ask you, do you... Um, obviously, as a Muslim, you, you, you would take every word for, uh, of the Quran, uh, yes. literally. Or I'm since, a fundamentalist Muslim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so you would take the word of the Quran. Uh, but to what extent do you go into accepting the Hadiths and, um, and the seer of the Prophet and to mm -hmm. under, um, and, and when, which biography, like, I mean, do you take it seriously? I accept all of it. I accept all of it, debate all of it. So, 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 what? How do you deal with instances like Banu Quraitia, um, the, the 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 massacre of those, um, and wow. also, mm -hmm. Al, Al Tabari has written in in context of the verses that we were talking about the treaty ones. Um, the, Tabari is pretty clear that it was actually the Muslims who broke the treaty first, whereas there was a, a Qureshi girl who no. ran, who ran, uh, uh, hear me out um, that there was a Qureshi woman who ran to uh, Muslims and sought protection and she converted to Islam. And then when, when Qureshis asked um, Muhammad to return the girl, uh, the Quranic verse came in that don't return the believers. Um, and, and that's how uh, the, there was, there's another, there's another reference to breaking, breaking the treaty as well. The one of the allies of the Quraysh had actually attacked the Muslims. So that's why Muslims said, okay, you have broken the treaty. So now screw you. And there, there's no, reference of anyone ever trying to make uh, or renegotiate the terms. Um, so, so Quran, we can, as, as critics, we can see the verses that we just spoke about that, okay, well, it's, it's like history being written by the victorious and you say things in which you paint a rosy picture of yourself and you write in good things, but you don't actually act upon mm -hmm. them. So this is why we as critics would look into Tabari would, would look into the Hadith and try to understand the context of what it was. As I said, fair enough. You, you said that you, you would only look at the Quran. You, you read these three verses on paper. I would say, okay, it's fair enough. I mean, I still wouldn't go uh, to that extreme, but fair enough. But we have to look at the, the context. And to, for me to understand, I have to refer to the commentaries. Um, sure. sure. But, but, but if you look at the uh, literal translation itself, you're fine with that. So th that gets you out of problem, but it doesn't get the fundamentalist out of the problem who who would actually look into it in light of that, they would actually affect the mother. They would they would devise policies and make Sharia law uh, and, and all of that. So how would you, so my, yeah, so my, my, my question in, in a nutshell is how would you deal with the, the other barbaric instances that are recorded in mainly in Tabari, I'd say, and the shark. Well, well, if your if your question is already been, um, well, when we say that uh, the, one of the evidences I gave you is because it clearly teaches not to kill innocent civilians in chapter from chapter nine, nine it teaches you to deal to to make peace with the non-believers and it only tells you that you should only make warfare against those who openly attack you now there are some cases where you can engage in offensive war but as far as barbarity is concerned um i guess my question is I would have to look at what specific example you're referring to and we could talk about let's that talk, let's talk but about banu yeah, yeah. let's talk yeah. about banu Kareza. Banu yeah. Let's so, talk about that. Banu Kareza, a tremendous amount of propaganda about the killing of the Banu Kareza tribe, um, blasting on Fox News to uh, Michael Medved and nationally syndicated radio, a tremendous amount of propaganda. So let me first go ahead and at least give our Islamic side. So the story of Banu Kareza can be found inside the book Sirah ibn Ishaq page 454 and the cool thing is and put it out there on the internet so if you just google ibn ishaq you can get a free copy of it 
to the yeah, PDF I've, version. Yeah, I've, so, I've, I've, I've read most of that. Um, yeah. Obviously, I don't know the page number. Um, so, so are you... It's 454. So, yeah, so what, what, is, what is happening with... So, so, so you, do you deny the number of six to 900 uh, Jews being beheaded? Yeah, so let me continue. What the see that they'll always tell you exactly what you just said. Never read from the. Uh, am I right? Uh, well, I've read it. I, uh, I I've actually okay. I've actually written, copied, and pasted it in my in, in, in my book, for instance. For so, the, the so that. why did who who picked this punishment to to do that? Punishment of what? Sorry, uh, of uh, killing them. Yeah. Well, it, it, it was there was a mediator involved, and um, Muhammad and the and the Qurayshi, sorry, the the Banu Quraysh people did involve someone else as well, and they agreed to right. it. But the question is, Muhammad could have said, "Well, maybe not." I mean, that's well, just like uh, the, the, me, who, know, who knows that the other, who, who knows who knows the other person could have been trying to suck up to Muhammad because he was the up and coming force. Well, I'll tell you why that's not true because the why someone was not just not trying to suck up to because the punish many other tribes who betrayed the peace treaty like the banu kareza did uh like the banu nadir which is like my name n-a-d-i-r banu kareza just banu kareza just stayed out of it okay that's not what sarah ibn ishaq says no no, read no, no, but, no okay. yeah i know i've read it but but they didn't actively go against muhammad they didn't attack they, sarah ibn ishaq said they act they that they are the ones who betrayed the peace treaty by no by not by not taking part uh, uh in the battle of trench but by not actually getting no involved. no they, they open the back door for the enemy to come in and slaughter the muslims yeah but, That's yeah, what but Ibn said. yeah 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 but, but there's another reference on that as well that uh, they were from within the muslim groups who wanted that treaty to fall and they were actually going back and forth between um the, between the two enemy tribes and they were trying to influence banu Kareza okay. to so, so again, so we, we can go into that again. If, I, if I have you to, want to, I, I have to by, yeah. All right, that's fine. Yeah, 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 no, that, that's fair enough. Fair enough. Look, I, uh, well, can I, I wasn't finish there. the story? What happened? Yeah. So I, I just want to ask you: Could Muhammad not lead an example and say, you know what? Screw this. I'm, I, I am here for as an example for the rest of humanity. I can say, okay, let's not do that. Let's not kill these people and marry their women or take their women as sex slaves. Okay, what there was that prophet to the Jews, and I forget the name of the Sahaba. So what they actually did, they quoted out of the book of Deuteronomy, and I don't have the passage with me. I yeah. can email it to you. Yeah, yeah. And in the book of Deuteronomy, it says that the males shall be killed, and the women and children will be taken as uh, into slavery. So this is actually taken from the Bible, and this is what the Jews presided on themselves and inside Sarah Ibn Ishaq it says because it is the Jews who want to be ruled by God's law the Torah that was their judgment but Islamic judgment is Jalla Jalla means banishment uh, take your things get up and get out that's what happened to Banu Nadir uh, yeah. they were banished when they broke the treaty so this was a pronouncement which they did upon themselves yeah so this is very similar to what they did in Masada where they kind of picked a group suicide but my, my question is again, so Muhammad was saying, yeah, okay, well, you want to volunt voluntarily get beheaded, go ahead. Mm -hmm. so, so is, is that what your this position is? A, this is something we, because this was something which was revealed in the Torah, in the Bible. So really, this is a question no, you got to no, raise no, for no, both no, uh, no. the Bible yeah, no, and no. as well. Yeah, Yeah, but Muhammad's claim was that these are outdated books. So we, we my message is final. Could he not... Could he not mm -hmm. say, "Well, you know, you don't have to die. You can, um, you can, you can just be. You can, you can either get banished, which is again not a good um, punishment or decision. But still, let's just say at the time of the, if you put those times, because they probably would have done the same to Muhammad and his people mm -hmm. as well. Um, but let's just say he had banished them and said, you know what, you don't have to be beheaded. Um, why, why did he not do that?" I don't know what I know. The what his statement was, 
He says, this is what God did reveal, which was, of course, in the book of Deuteronomy. God revealed this in the book of Deuteronomy. Therefore, it presided corrupted. over no, them. But, no, but it was corrupted. That, that's the claim. That, that part was not corrupted. So, so, There's okay. a lot in so, the Bible that, which is true. Yeah, yeah. so, so Muhammad uh, agreed at that point that this well, part is not well, corrupted. So why did, he, why did he not include that in Islam then, in the Quran? That, okay, that, that's what you can do. See, I don't, I don't have a specific answer to that. We know that this was a history. The, see, the thing is, here's what I kind of, I object to. See, they will just tell you Muhammad killed 600 to 900 Jews, but they will it hide ha the fact. It they will, hold, hold on, Harris, let me finish. They would hold hide on. the fact that but it was I don't know. Really past that. Yeah, I got your point. I got, yeah, we, we, I, I got I, your point. I have, I have something I just want to say on this. They hide the fact that this was actually a ruling coming from the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, but what we, we, why just look at Banu Kareza? If there is something called the Charter of Medina, Dastur al Medina. Now, if you look over there, you'll see there are many Jewish tribes fight against the Prophet of nothing uh, which was done to them. In fact, on the deathbed of when Muhammad was about to die, and this is taken from the book Al Rahik al Maktum, the Seal of Nectar, you know what he said? He said, use for my rent, which I have to pay to the Jew, to, to a Jewish person whom he was renting his armor from. So now this is very peculiar here. He could have killed all the Jews, thrown them out, but no, he continued even on his last breath to do business with peaceful, good Jews, so much so that he would pay rent for his armor right, uh, right to him. And, and if I can get you a copy of uh, the Charter of Medina. Yeah, okay. And, and it's really read that because it really goes over the whole policy of Jews. You can email me at na1971-1990 at gmail.com. I have a free copy of it. Normally, you got to pay for it. If you just try to Google it, you're not going to find it unless you're really lucky. So over there, it goes over the policy of Jews, how they say we are one community with them. And it stated we will fight and defend anybody who attacks them so long as peace treaty and they maintain cordial relations with us. And this has actually made history uh, as being, I think some said it was like one of the first constitutions or something like that. Yeah, okay. Anyway, Charter that of Medina. Means, yeah, okay. I, got, I, yeah, I, I got your point. Again, the, yeah. this is one of the most common problems we run into that when we point out a bad um, position in Islam or bad um, mm -hmm. historical fact, then you, then we, we, then we get the response by quoting some good actions done by Muhammad. So, so that's Absolutely. not a problem. Yes. So I, I have no yes. problem in admitting that Muhammad did a lot of good things uh, for his time by his by the standards of his time. But he did a lot of bad things. I mean, the, the good things don't negate the bad things, even if they directly contradict with each other. That doesn't negate it. If you, if if we could establish that, okay, well, let's throw away, and which is why I think the Quranists are, are getting more interested in this because they're, they're trying to throw away Ishaq and Tabari, and they're, they're trying to throw away all the Hadith books because no, 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 don't throw them away. I love those books. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, but but you cannot get out of the trouble that by simply saying that the the arbitrary. The, um, the the other person decided that, okay, well, it's in Deuteronomy, so we're going to go ahead and killing with the people of Banu Kareza. And Muhammad said, well, sorry, not my decision. That that doesn't get out of the out, out of the problem. If, if Muhammad is the leader and the person in power, he, he definitely could have played a better role towards those people, if, especially if he wants to claim himself a Ramat al the, the, the most the, the most merciful for the entire, I don't know, the, all the worlds. That is that is not good enough. That's not going to get you out of trouble by quoting some good actions that he did on other instances. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've kind of hit a fork in the road. I mean, there are a lot of questions we can raise on it, and I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer to, I, I uh, which I think can satisfy you on that. But what I oppose, what I am against, is a propaganda where they hide the Charter of Medina. They hide all the which we see. In Islamic yeah. scriptures, who are Jewish people, that yeah. really makes me upset. That's and that's dishonest. Yeah, look, that's fair enough. Look again, I, the ex-Muslims who are educated on these subjects. I've read Charter of mm -hmm. Medina. I didn't find anything majorly wrong with that, especially by the standards of that time. So, so that's why I mean, oh, it's great for standards of today's time too. 
Um, yeah, we'll, okay, fair enough. We, we, we can argue on that. But um, the, um, the, the, the whole concept of jizya could be, I don't want to get into that debate, well, how much jizya is allowed and how much is not. So mm-hmm. we, we can put that aside. But again, I, I'm, I'm willing to concede that, okay, it was okay by that standard. But again, it doesn't get you out of the other troubles. The, for example, one being that one. Now, what about sex slaves? How do you how do you how do you address that? How do you answer that criticism? So there's actually, if you're interested, I had a debate on this with Robert Spencer. Well, uh, you could just Google my name and Robert Spencer, and you can watch it. So if you look at the entire Hadith and Quran and put it all together, you will never find an instance. Of, hello, you there? Yeah, I'm listening. Oh, okay, yeah. You'll never find an instance of any rape of one of, of, of a woman captive of war. It's just not there. What you will find is that they had sexual relations with them, but we don't find any rape. One of the reasons why is because of the clear teaching in the Hadith where uh, one of the Sahabas was beating his slave and Prophet Muhammad walked upon him and told him that the gates of hell will open up for you. So if you can't even beat a slave, then God forbid, you know, doing an act of rape is a terrible act of violence. Uh, how are you going to be able to do that? So what we see actually is that uh, we don't, I think this is the reason why we don't find any kind of rape of a sex slave inside any tafsir, whether it's Tabari, whether it's Bukhari, whether it's the Quran, nothing. Yeah, well, uh, because I think they. This, well. this is how I answer that. Because uh, once you become a slave, you you are a property. So your will or your uh, consent doesn't even matter. I mean, even in Roman times, uh, the the slaves that they had, the, the the quotes of slaves are not even mm-hmm. recorded anywhere because it just is, with a very few exceptions, uh, who who were mm-hmm. higher slaves and slaves who were freed later on. Uh, but, but the ordinary slaves were not even, it, it, it didn't even matter what, what, what they had to say. We, all we hear about the slaves, we hear from the Roman perspective. And, 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 and that argument could go in that as well. That uh, once you are owned by a slave, or, or by, by a master, then, then it doesn't matter whether, whether she has a consent or not. So, so that's how mm-hmm. I say it. Um, I, I well, see. Well, she does actually. No, no, no. But simply you saying that. Okay. Well, you can see this is an, another goes back to the same argument that you say. Well, show me a verse that says it's not like that. Um, but why have but sex I, slaves? Why have sex slaves in the first place? Okay. Well, let me first go back. I will explain that. And let me first of all, I wouldn't use the word sex slave. I don't think that's a appropriate term. I think what it. The terminology is that why do we have slavery, whether they're men or women? Uh, let me go. I will address that. But let me first go back to the I, hadith, which I quoted. I, I have more. I have more of a problem with with actual uh, the, with, with the se- with, with the okay. part of sex slave than than the slavery is obviously a, a huge problem as well. But but it looks like when okay. we talk about exactly sex slaves, then it seems like. Mm-hmm. Um, there is there is. No, no, no. A, I don't agree with the term sex slave. Okay, well, I don't agree about, with that. You want to talk about Kanis, You want to talk about Bandi, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. Well, the point well, is. Well, again, let's go back to the scripture. But, why, but would we, an, why would we? Why would if we go back to the Hadith, we go back to the Quran, we go back to the whether it's Tabari, whether it's Jalalain, whatever. Why don't we find sex slave? Why don't we find, I, I oh, this guy raped this girl and that was okay. No, Rather, no, what no, we no. find was a guy pinned down his slave and started beating him, or I don't know, if it, I can't remember if it was him or her. And Muhammad looked over that and said, the doors of hell have yeah, opened yeah, up he, for you. So he, now here's the question for you, Harris. Here's no, the no, question I, I have I, for I, you. Yeah, I, 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 let me answer the first question that you just raised. I, yeah. I, I told you that because it is not even considered a bad thing to rape a slave or a captive, so may, that, that could be the reason why it is not mentioned anywhere because it, it just doesn't matter. I gave you an example with the Roman okay. um, uh, history well, as well. Let me, let me, here's, here's my question for you. If... So basically, and I'll give you the hadith um, if you're if you're interested. Um, if in this instance, which I quoted, which I'm just narrating to you, the Sahaba immediately stopped beating a slave and set this slave free. Whether I can't remember whether he or she, but if you can't even beat a slave, how are you, God forbid, going to do a yeah, rape? Because, how no, is that possible? Walk me through the steps. Show well, me the yeah, process. I'll, I'll, yeah, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you because okay. the beating, beating is obviously more explicit and violent in that sense where you're beating someone and is crying and screaming. Now, if there is a slave, if there's a female slave who has grown up under the, under the belief that, okay, this is my master, he can do anything to me, and women do get raped silently as well. They don't always protest in that, in that case. We, we have hundreds what? of people. Not everyone is Rape not is everyone a would, violent act. It's yeah, horrible. People go to the hospital. Yeah, well, hang on, Nadir. Don't try to spin that on me and try to make me look like that as okay. if I'm defending rape. I am simply telling you that that if a woman is led to believe that it is okay for him to have sex with you, then she is not necessarily going to protest. Even people get okay. beaten. Even people get beat, beat beaten by stronger people, and they actually are not. Um, uh, the, the protesting it, they, they, they might be asking for forgiveness or whatever. So, so, so if if in the psyche it is considered that well, sex uh, having sex with the slaves is just normal. It just mm -hmm. the consent doesn't even matter. That's probably why it was never even discussed. Well, okay, and actually, you're making a point there, Harris. Um, back at that time, the women understood that when you that the winning army is going to capture and take hold of all the women. So in their mind, they saw this as something which was they would have to do. So a lot of them would not protest. I'll give you an example. I think it's a battle of Hunain. So in this battle, the idolaters wanted to uh, attack the Muslims. But what they did, not only did they send the army out to fight the Muslims, but all of their property and all of their women came as well because um, because the, uh, the belief was the winning army is going to take all this. So in that time, yes, this was their belief. And here's the reason why. All the men died, let's just hypothetically say, um, there's not going to be a very, uh, I don't know how long the, the women would even survive in the desert without their male to go out because they were the hunters and gatherers. So someone's got to take care of all these children. Someone's got to take care of, of the women and children. And that's why they were then inherited by the winning army. And I think that's, this is my understanding of why we see that practice. But Islam came and said, okay, you can go ahead and, and, and bring them and inherit them, but do not beat them. Well, if you can't beat them, then God forbid, how are you going to commit such a violent act as a, as a, as a rape? This is why we don't find any sex slaves in, the, in our uh, Islamic scriptures. Is there is there a, is is there a direct hadith? Um, uh, because obviously I I, I want to expand my knowledge here. Is there a direct hadith that says directly says do not um, have um, do not rape your slaves? The closest we have is, and this is in the book of Sirah Ibn Ishaq, was the the slave girl Safiya. So basically, after a battle, there were two slave girls, Safiya and another one. And I'm forgetting what the other one was yeah, called. Yeah, yeah. So, I think I know. Yeah, so basically, and this is not going to absolutely address your question, but it, it's the closest we got. Um, so then uh, the Prophet Muhammad, these two slave girls were actually given to Prophet Muhammad. Uh, Safiya came willingly and she told Muhammad that you are the fulfillment of my dream of like that. She had his dream of this moon falling into her lap. She, so let me back up. The story was she saw uh, Safiya had a black eye and Muhammad said, who did that to you? Who hit her you? She did. Said, my her husband did. Her husband did, right. But now look at the other woman. The other woman started screaming. She started screaming. having yeah. a fit. And, and, uh, and what did Muhammad do? He said, give her to me. Let me do something terrible to her. No, Muhammad said to her, get this she devil away from me and muhammad left with a willing participant who saw muhammad in a dream of the moon falling into her lap so yeah. we see from this example that the, the non-willing participant even though this slave belonged to muhammad he immediately released her when she showed hesitation and yeah. that's why we say you should well, not okay. do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, the the other possible possibility we can have from that quote is get get that she devil away from me. That Muhammad thought she was she was a crazy bitch, for instance. Um, that I I don't want to get involved with this woman. Maybe it wasn't enjoyable for Muhammad to 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 get involved with her because he just he just found her crazy. Um, well, let me give you another hadith then. Okay. Well, actually, this is from Sirah Ibn Ishaq. 
That wasn't the only time. There was also Rehana. Rehana was yeah. one of the women yeah. taken from Banu Kareza. Yeah. Now, but it said in Sirah Ibn Ishaq, Rehana hated Islam. She hated everything, but yet she became a slave of Muhammad. And then it stated, Muhammad stayed away from Rehana until she, that, that, she came willingly that she finally accepted Islam and then became a willing participant. So the text here said Muhammad stayed away from her. And then there's also the final uh, slave girl who she said, well, I don't like you. And they said, what do you mean you don't like me? This was given to one of the Sahabas. He goes, You're, I don't know the reason why. But then she says, okay, let's go to Muhammad. And then they said to Muhammad, she said, this girl doesn't like me and she's now my slave. He wanted to have relations with her you know sexual relations so then muhammad gave someone else and i can't remember who it was and then she said oh, okay i'll go with that so she actually had a choice yeah, of who she wanted so here no, we see three uh, girls Rihanna, who we were know. not raped at all yeah but with rehana first of all it's not clear whether he actually married her eventually or not but she did stay as a slave um but muhammad stayed away from her that's what the text said he distanced himself from her when she showed that repulsion towards him and Islam. Well, okay. So well, this is why I've never seen any evidence that Muslims are to rape sex slaves or, or any of this. This is all baloney. Okay. All right. Okay. That, that, that point is a fair point. I, I can't counter that. If uh, I actually don't recall uh, Muhammad staying away from, uh, from her because... Well, Email me as a reminder. I got all of this stuff okay. on PDF because I remember I'm, it's all coming from Ibn Ishaq. Yeah, yeah. And I made quite a few copies of it. That's why with Tabri, there's quite a few volumes. It's a, it's a, it's a fairly lengthy reading. Um, and obviously, you can't remember everything. Uh, but what I had noted mm -hmm. from that was Rehana did stay as a slave. Uh, yes, he did. Until mm -hmm. the death, and there was no point, there was actually no evidence of him marrying her at any point but he's but but isn't she recorded as a possible wife of muhammad in some other instances i don't know uh because she is considered in some places as his wife uh, or, or as at least his partner so i don't know if there's a discrepancy there somewhere uh, whether he did stay with her or not um but anyway um i, I think that she they did eventually have relations but only when she after she to Islam. I think that's what happened. And then she was uh, mistaken. Uh, well, yeah, uh, she, she, she did eventually convert. We know that. Because, but but the, criti the, the criticism that we get is, uh, you know, like she was a slave. Obviously, it would be better to, to be a Muslim and free woman than live as a slave. So the, the, no, 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 no. That's a big mistake. Uh, so what Islam did no, was... No, it, sorry, sorry, my, it, my, my it, point. Sorry, I, I misspoke there. Let me let me clarify. She, she actually yeah. probably married Muhammad uh, and because it would be easier to be to be a wife than 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 live as a slave. Um, I, I I don't know. I, I I don't have I don't have knowledge on that. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, now the the other question I want to ask you is how do you get away? with um, with the wife beating worse um <clears throat> so you know when you talk about that surah 4 verse 34 there's another verse in the quran which talked about the beating of a wife in which the prophet of islam i'm sorry this is actually in the quran let me re rephrase that where allah revealed to beat your wife with like a like a bundle of grass or hay yeah so yeah. No, and it, i forget it, no, what verse in the quran yeah, that verse, that verse is actually quoting one of the past prophets that she was disrespectful mm -hmm. towards God and God said, beat her, and he beat her with a bunch of grass. So, so, so that, that doesn't necessarily say that how you should well, be. It just, it just right, narrates well, see, the that story. That raises a question. That raises a question, well, uh, what is the severity of this so-called beating? Are you talking about, because it was actually God who instructed him to beat her with a bundle of grass. So are we talking about that? And if we look at all of the Hadith scripture, we look at all of the, from Tabari to, to Bukhari to Sunan Ibn Dawood, you will never see any authority or justification for beating a woman more than that bundle of grass. We, there we simply is no justice I, I, for that.
Yeah, I, I, I take that. But even then, what is the point of that? Just to embarrass her and make a woman realize that she's she she she, she is lower on authority that a, a a man can beat a wife, even symbolically. You, know, I, I don't buy that because it's such a vague well, verse that anyone can take it as they want. But, who is to say? You know, who is to say that women uh, cannot reciprocate and do the same? Look, my wife we got tried to. Pick, look, no, look, yeah. look, my wife does pretty much the same thing to me. She tried to, uh, she tried to pick me up and try to. We were playing around. We were playing, doing like jujitsu and stuff like that. She tried to pick me up, and she tried to slam me. She gets rough with me. So I see both men and women kind of doing this. Yeah, no, no, but yeah, but yeah, but the Quran explicitly says. It has an instruction on how to deal with disobedient wives, but why it doesn't reciprocate anywhere else in the world, in, in the Quran? That is a problem. But you you cannot you cannot keep getting out oh, of it by mean, saying well you can say the opposite. Well, again, there could be again. This is conjecture. So basically, you know, see the thing is, women. It, when this is this is when it talked about Surah four verse thirty four. This is talking about you know the time of divorce. And even today, whenever you got like an issue where, you know, you got a divorce between men and women, women always get the short end of the stick. I mean, it's always going to be worse for her. And, you know, like in Pakistani community and our culture, especially a lot of times when, when a woman gets the lock, they don't even get remarried. So, you know, could this and this is all wrong. So but again, this is all my conjecture. I'm just thinking could this reconciliatory action as it can be given as a token to take her back and to not actually do the divorce could this satisfy the man's anger his yeah, that he yeah, has towards you, a woman something like yeah, that i'm guessing yeah but, yeah but don't you but don't you think that is a wrong message to satisfy an angry man by letting him say okay you can symbolically if it could prevent a divorce no if it could actually prevent a divorce and it could give the man his sat due satisfaction okay good i got her back for what she did to me and the marriage can stick then maybe it's the right thing to do all right okay well that that i think that's a pretty controversial statement you just made um and and it, it, it just with a bundle of grass I think is not that bad. No, no, yeah, but, yeah, but, no, but it seems like it seems like domestic violence uh, apologetics to me in some sense. I, I see the motivation behind you. You're, you're picking lesser of the two evils in what, what you see it as right. as um, as two evils. I actually would say probably better to be divorced than than be mentally humiliated. That uh, even even if you get beaten by um, you know, like to just, you know, by two fingers, like, okay, well, I'm just some sort of a weird cultish um, uh, activity that you do. Okay, well, I've just, I've just beaten mm -hmm. you to make you realize that you are inferior to me or, you, or I have authority over you. I would still not take that, even though it doesn't cause physical pain uh, because it's humiliating. And I don't think anyone should be humiliated, at least in this day and age, let alone past times. I mean, yeah, no one should have ever been, but we don't live in a perfect world. Um, okay, well, see, see, don't you see that this kind of language that we get from the from people like you that okay, well, it says just gentle beating, but it's just symbolical beating, and if it's if it gets you out of um, divorce, then well, a blade of grass. Okay. I think it was a bundle of grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so don't don't, don't you think that this these ideas? Are a source of great discomfort to to critics of Islam, and 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 I see that maybe at some point, more and more women are going to keep seeing that as a problem, and they're going to, as they become more educated and independent, they're going to start leaving Islam. Well, here's what I see. What I see is a big hoodwinkle has been debunked. Listen, when people quote Surah 4 verse 34, just put Surah 4 verse 34, go put it in Google Images. They're telling people that you that Islam teaches to beat a woman black and blue. I think when people actually find that the Quran doesn't say that, it was talking about a bundle of grass, I think they're going to be kind of surprised and they're going to be like, wait a second, what the heck? What am I being fed over here? No, look, I've, I've, okay, well, but okay well why well, let me answer your why, question why, Harris. Ask why, me, why people, i'm going to answer you okay. i think when people look at this verse and they see how they've been deceived and lied to by this anti-islamic propaganda i think they're going to have a second look at the quran and see oh, this is not that bad of a book 
I think that's what people are going to think. And they're going to look at those anti-Islamic people and say, those guys lied to me. No, because uh, you, you, as I, I, was, I was actually being charitable. I, I don't accept that as, 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 uh, as an explanation that you can only be beaten by a bunch of grass, a uh, bunch of grass, because that is narrating a story. That is the same story as it was mentioned that Zulkan mm -hmm. went to the end of the earth and he saw the sun setting in the murky waters. So you say that, okay, well, it, it was just a story. It was being described how Zulkan saw uh, the sun setting in, in muddy water. So, so that is just a story of the past prophet that he got angry and he beat his wife with a bunch of grass. And um, that doesn't say that that Allah actually instructed it. Was it. God. It was yeah. God who instructed him to do that. Well, so the, the question what, is this: What's the worst? What authority I, I, do I, I have? Let's no, say, no. let's say, let's let's take a man here you, who's now say, you know what? I'm gonna go out and beat my wife. What authority does he have? to do anything more than what was stated in the Quran. What evidence can he rely upon? Wait, yeah. you know what? No, exactly. fast, forget it. I'm no. going to use my fist. Yeah, no, that, no, that, yeah, that's a fair point. But again, it's not clear that a bundle of grass actually is, uh, is an instruction on how to be the wife. Some of the most apologists well, don't even let me give you a hadith. Point. There is actually a hadith where the Prophet where uh, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, warned people about men who do beat their women. And uh, he said they are not the best amongst us. Yeah. So there is that hadith. But actually, yeah, 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 but there was a woman. Are they going to hell though? Are they, are they going to hell? Well, it didn't, uh, it, the, the, the text ended there. I don't know what would yeah. happen so, after that. So, so they're not the best amongst us. Yeah, fair enough. So I mean, so, so I can also make a blanket statement that the people who drink five times a day as opposed to two times a day, are not the best amongst us. It, 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 does, it doesn't get you out of it. It's not a major condemnation. Well, it's, just, it's just making a blanket so, statement. Let me give you another hadith. There was actually a woman who got beat up, and uh, she came to, her, um, to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and it said, stated that some of her parts were broken or whatever that would mean. So then he said, go get your husband to come over here. And the husband came over and he said, did you do this to her? I'm paraphrasing. He said, yes. He says, take your things and get away from her. He didn't even wait to listen to his side of the story. He said, is that really true, O Messenger of Allah? He said, yes, do it now. Take your things and get away from her. And he immediately separated those two couples when he saw evidence of domestic yeah, yeah. violence. Okay, well, uh, if you like, I can give you that hadith. No, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm fine with that. Uh, I am yeah. fine with that. He, he probably did not authorize uh, breaking bones or giving bruises. But the problem with an interpreter here is, and this is with the vagueness of the Quran, that let's just say I become a pious Muslim and, and, and I don't like certain habits of my wife. And I tell her and I stop sleeping with her, and then maybe I slap her. Slapping is not going to cause any breaking of bones. It's not even going to cause any bruising uh, if you have really dark skin or brown skin. Um, where do we draw the line? Uh, are you aware of the? No, there is aware, a hadith you, on that. No, no, no. But, but are you aware of the hadith where where Muhammad actually, when Aisha followed him, and he yeah. got the he got the Not revelation. The yeah. yeah. Yep. So, so he he actually. Uh, I don't, some apologists say, well, it was just a gentle push or whatever, but, but he actually punched her in the chest and caused me pain. I don't know. Right. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be. So let me uh, explain that one. Lecture too much. And I'm going to say, well, yeah, he must have really given a closed fist where it bruised her and everything. I, I don't know that. But my point is, did Muhammad follow the Allah's guideline of beating her with a bunch so, of grass? So the, the, um, Yes. So basically, to answer your question, Aisha, remember, she was a child. Uh, she wasn't a woman. So, but as far as a grown woman, no, Muhammad never oh, hit a grown right. woman. There is a hadith on that. So, so, where, so, uh, so, yeah. so, so you have yeah. a position that Aisha was a child? This hadith says that uh, Aisha was nine years old when consummated the marriage. That is in Sayyid Sahih Bukhari. But we're going, so the, the mistake which a lot of people think is that because so at nine years old, this is not a grown woman. Um, right. Going back to there is a hadith, two hadiths which I wanted to address. I mean, we could talk about child marriages. We could talk about that next, but let's finish beating. And then we can talk about child brides. Um, but to finish, there is a hadith where Prophet Wasallam condemned anyone to slap anybody in the face. There is, there is that hadith. And then there is also a hadith where it says, Muhammad never hit a woman in his life. Never hit a woman in his life. Yeah, and okay. that's what I follow. 
That's what all the fundamentalist Muslims follow. You never hit a you never hit a woman because Muhammad never did. So, so, Whether so, so now, I, uh, yeah, but, but okay, yeah. all right. So, so that at least that is consistent with that claim that Muhammad never hit it. Uh, so, but my problem mm -hmm. was if Aisha was an older woman, then he did hit her. But if you go with the with the with, with the version that she was a child. So we can establish that Muhammad maybe gently hit a child, but he never hit a woman. So that is, at no, least no. that is consistent. So I'll, I'll, so I'll give you points on that, um, which is fair enough. Uh, Muhammad may not have hit a woman at any point. But again, the problem remains, Muhammad didn't even, um, you know, uh, gently hit a woman in that case, uh, a disobedient wife. He had, there was a clear mutiny amongst Hafsa and Aisha and some other wives when Muhammad um, tried to have uh, relations with Maria and Muhammad even at that point did not hit any of his wives. We don't have any recorded incident. Uh, so he, he probably did not follow the command that first tell her off and then stop sleeping with him. He actually, I think he did tell him off and he did stop sleeping with them uh, for 28 days or something, but it didn't hit them. Um, but there is a hadith that Umar hit his daughter um, who was Hafsa and Abu Bakr hit his daughter Aisha um, uh, over that incident, but Muhammad did not stop them. But fair enough, again, you can you can infer that Muhammad didn't hit him, but but Umar and uh, uh, and Abu Bakr did exactly that in defense of Muhammad. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, maybe that opens the avenue that fathers can beat up their daughters. Um, that's that's fair enough fine again th these are the problems that would keep facing con uh, problems of conflict with modern especially modern women even within the muslim community that who women who become educated a, 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 a woman who who is a doctor in islamabad is not going to allow her father or her or her husband to interpret that verse in any sense, even if you go on, I'm, and again, as I said, I don't agree with that bunch of grass interpretation that you have, but even with that, she's not going to accept that. And that's where the problem mm -hmm. is going to come. I, and I hope that most of it comes from the Muslim, from Muslim women than Muslim men. Well, actually, let's make this our last point because I got to get going. It's yeah. kind of late over here. Yeah. Um, so, well, my uh, kind of the final point, what, what is taught in the masajid and the mosques, and even from the scholars, you know, don't even think about hitting a woman. And I don't think there's any justification, which I have heard from anyone who could teach to do more than a bundle of grass, at least. Okay, okay. Not that okay, I'm okay, okay. Also, yeah, okay, fair enough. And let's, let's wrap it up. But don't you think that Allah okay. could have done a better job, despite that you, even you agree that be beating a woman is not fine, uh, but don't you think he could have done a better job in actually not having that? I mean, he could have ended the verse at sleeping with them and then separating your own ways? No, I don't think that because if there is a verse which leads us questioning, it may be that there could be a higher wisdom which we don't know about, uh, which maybe we'll discover later on. We uh, discover so, no, I don't believe that. But when we look at Islam as compared to atheism, which has no moral killing, a million people is just like a drop in the bucket for just like stepping on ants. Islam is far superior than atheism. And that's why we could criticize, but at the end of the day, Islam is far superior, more peaceful than atheism, than Christianity or any other religion. And that's why I follow it. Well, atheism is not a set of guidelines or book. Atheism is just a position that says, well, we don't mm -hmm. think that there is uh, that, that the message in the Quran is correct or not. Well, well there's no moral values in atheism. Well, Morals do yeah, not exist. Yeah, yeah. Killing a million people is a drop morality, in the bucket. Yeah, but morality doesn't have to come from atheism. Morality comes from other sources like reason, first of all. Um, That's your opinion. Faith. No, no, it's not my opinion. It's all that, opinion. No, no, but that, the country that you live in. Okay, well, Taylor, let's do that. We'll okay. have to do that debate at another all time because right. I got to get going. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Well, I think we have gone almost two hours. So, uh, oh, my God. I, yeah. I, I'll, just, I'll just finish that. And uh, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for okay. reaching out to me because I think the last uh, experience was a little bit uh, distasteful for me. And even at the start of this debate, I think the first half an hour was a little bit uh, annoying again. But I think... Uh, we, we, we decided to 
go into a conversation rather than a debate and keep beating the same drum. And um, yeah, you're more than welcome uh, to do that next time as well. And we can talk about the child marriages. We've spoken about wife beating. I don't think, again, I'm not convinced on your explanation, but I guess that's that's the whole point of discussion that people who watch it and they can like it and they can make up their own mind. Um, okay, well, thanks for everyone who, who joined in and, right. and watching. And uh, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for the discussion, Nadir. All right. See you guys. Okay. Thank See you. Guys. you bye. bye.